to the world, Ben Marshall. Hi. <laughs> all right, we'll go ahead and get started now we've got that all set up. Thanks for bearing with us with our technology stuff. Real quick, my name is Ben Marshall. I'm the program director up at Baldwin. Uh, and then I'll let these guys introduce themselves, starting with Maria that's back in the corner. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm Maria. I'm the food service manager up at Camp Baldwin. And I'll be giving you a little more information if you need. Uh, I'm not going to be first. <laughs> but my, the front of the camera. Oh, shoot. They don't know who's talking then. Right. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mark Lee. I'm the camp director for Camp Baldwin. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, that's all you know. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Courtney Hill, and I'm the business manager and fun for now. Special treat for you guys tonight. Yeah. I'm Daniel, I'm the head wrangler up at Baldwin, and I'll talk to you guys more about the rides and what we have to offer. Your, your name again? Daniel Evans. Daniel. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Real quick, how many people have been up to Baldwin before? Oh, okay. How, oh! Many, people, how many people is this your first time ever up to Baldwin? Awesome. That's a good mix, actually. All right. Well, in case you don't know, one of the special things about Camp Baldwin is that we don't have a dining hall. And some people might think like, oh no, we don't have a dining hall. That's awesome. Actually, exactly what you just said is one of the most amazing things. I might be a little bit biased, but it's one of the amazing things for camp. The main reason we do that, it's not because of money, it's not because anybody's lazy or anything like that. We do that because of the, the patrol method. Yeah. Epic Camp Baldwin, we are really big about the patrol method. And one of the fundamental things about using the patrol method is cooking in your campsite with their own kids. The kids spending time with each other, cooking, cleaning, learning all those skills that they're gonna need later on. It's really a bonding moment that they can come together on the picnic table, underneath the dining kitsch, with the food that they made themselves and enjoying it that way. And that's the main reason we do that. Um, so like I said, I'm a little bit biased, but that's that. Um, it also gives you guys as a troop an opportunity to have a little bit more free time. You don't have to assemble at a dining hall at a designated Three hour, as a day, excuse me, hour, three times a day. You can have your meal whenever you want. We're, Marie's going to be talking to you a little bit more about food and how all that works, um, with all those details later on. But to give you a little bit overview with that, um, like I said, I guess you know, being from Boston, a little biased with it, but it works really well. Um, they'll struggle for a couple of days, but once they get a hang of it, you'll notice that you're going to start having leaders develop from your kids. Um, as in like, hey, I actually really like cooking, something I enjoy, um, and, and going on with that patrol method to build up that teamwork. Um, jumping right in, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Maria, and she'll talk about food since we're right on that topic then. Okay, so Ben touched on the patrol method. Um, we have a menu, should be in there, your kind of menu packet. Great thing about all ones, since you are cooking your own food, you can change that up. You have a list of what we're giving. What we're giving you each meal um, and we'll deliver your meals twice a day um, but lots of troops can like to bring stuff and enhance it embellish it make it something different totally different you could use the ingredients and just make something different so that's a great fun thing to do um, we base our um, counts on how many servings you guys want so you always have plenty of food. If you're not getting enough, let us know. If you're getting too much, let us know that too, and we'll make changes as you need during the week. Um, big thing is if you have food allergies or special needs, you know, dietary things, um, please, please, please fill out your special needs forms ahead of time so that we can prepare and make sure we have what you guys need for your boys and your adults and stuff like that. Um, uh, we cook. Any other questions about anything? Any questions about the food? Yeah. Not so much the food, but the prep. Uh, you'll have knives, chopping blocks, uh, stoves, pans, plates, forks, spoons. I think we have all that stuff now, or are they? No, the mess kits you'll still the need to bring. Yeah, the mess yeah. kits you'll still need to bring. So your, not, not your fork, spoon, knife, cup, plate, bowl, that. So we need to bring a patrol box with plates and cups and bowls for the kids and the adults. Yeah. Silverware for all camp attendees. What about spatulas? That, frying pans, stoves. That stuff we have. If you, do, if you don't want to bring it, we have it. You can check out. You can borrow it and then 
You can check it out when you get there and you return it before you leave. Um, that we do room. have. If you have your own stuff, it's going to be conditional. We bring it on. It's in my experience. Okay. And we can supplement. We did, but... real quick, and the reason why it's a little bit confusing, we did just did a donation, if you will, uh, to spend on new cooking equipment. So we're still figuring out the best way to spend those funds and which equipment we need to replace and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But typically, everything that you'll need in terms of serving utensils, your stoves, we have uh, some stoves you can check out, uh, propane tanks. Um, it's recommended to bring your own propane tank, um, one, what is it, five gallons, the five big white one, one. Yeah. yeah, per patrol. They'll probably use that whole thing throughout the week. Yeah, and if you run out, we can refill. But like your coolers and your pots and pans and all that stuff, we have plenty of that that you can check out from us if you don't want to bring your own. The only thing you really need to bring um, from your own patrol gear is the individual mess kits, what the kids are going to be eating off of themselves. So the um, stoves, is there going to, like last year we had it set up so the boys were on their side and the adults were on theirs. Mm -hmm. And so the stoves will be, all we need is propane tanks, of course, but Maria, actually, set up for that. I can answer this one. Okay. So uh, to hop in front of the thingy. Uh, so the donation, uh, we're still figuring out what we actually want to put it towards because we are aiming towards actually buying enough stoves for every kitchen site within camp. So everywhere there's a dining shelter, currently we'll have a stove and an accompanying tank. Uh, we're asking you to bring your own tanks just because um, a scoutmaster in Portland actually put it, phrased it this way, uh, bringing your own stove is like bringing your own toothbrush. You can use someone else's, but that doesn't mean you'll have the same feeling and sense of how clean and used it is. We will make sure all your stuff is clean, but there's a little sense of um, gratification knowing that you have your own uh, and how it works, <laughs> making sure it works. Uh, ideally, we are going to be buying around 50 to 60 brand new um, camp chef stoves, three burners, as well as a five gallon tank for each one. How we're going to store them, we don't know yet, but we are planning on buying them for the year and uh, hopefully keeping those up to date for the future. So this is ideally for units that are brand new to camp and maybe brand new to scouting in general. So those of you who are in established units, you may not want to worry about it, or you may want to bring your own stuff, depending on how comfortable you are. Um, some units use it as a way of just kind of keeping things in line and in rotation because you want the familiarity of using your own stuff. For those of you who do not have that familiarity or would like to kind of make it easier on yourself, or maybe you don't have all the resources that you would like, we can supplement that for you. So I, I've heard, unfortunately, mixed messages. Bring your own stove, but we're looking to buy 50 or 60 of them so that we have them at camp. Yeah. Are you thinking about making that investment before we yeah. go on to Camp Baldwin? Yeah, we're, just, we're finishing it up right now. Todd is actually the one. And, uh, Todd McDonald. Todd McDonald and Bo okay. Anderson. Hold I on. said it! Okay. Right. Hold, hold on, on. hold on, hold on. Yeah. You all know who's all coming to Camp Baldwin this summer, right? Can you yeah. send us an email and let us know if you've got brand new stoves that are yeah. going to be there that we can use? Yeah. Because hauling a bunch of crap yeah. that I don't need to use to summer camp is not an ideal way for me to spend my allocation of transportation Right. space right so if you're going to have brand new stoves that are ready and you let me know that i won't need to bring my own that would really be helpful can you guys do that for us yeah actually we plan on sending an email <clears throat> on sunday night recapping all the information we collect and give out to this weekend and you'll get another email two weeks before you arrive okay. a one phone call will be given out the weekend before you arrive as well just that way we can get as much information and updates to you as possible things change things break things explode camps burn down Things happen. We want to keep you up to date as much as possible. And so when they do come in, you will know and find out. Uh, with that said, all of your units when you registered had a email address or a phone number associated with whoever's in control of your Tentaru account. Uh, please go on and update that information to reflect the most accurate person who will be responsible for communication or receiving our emails. We sent out a welcome letter back in May, early May with a link to add in more uh, information for other people to get receive our emails. Pass that around. If you did not get it, uh, come speak to me afterwards and we'll probably post it on the live feed as well as include it in our email that's gonna go out on Sunday to remind people to submit their information so we can get as much information out to the people who need to know. Uh, with that said, if you are in control of your Tentaru account and you're getting our emails, great. If you're not and they're going to a different committee chair or they're going to a former scoutmaster and a former adult leader, I would suggest either uh, contact that person to update it 
or calling our office to get it uh, changed manually. But yes, we don't want you to make unnecessary moves, especially if it's going to hinder your traveling time, your expenses towards getting to camp. Ideally, this donation was dedicated to make it easier for troops to come to camp. Um, uh, I, I'm going to say it right now. Baldwin is not easy. <laughs> it is meant to be a challenge. And it's meant to be something to test and be like a crucible for scouting. And for those who succeed and use it for all its best uses, they will come out stronger and better and more empowered to be stronger scouts. Those who are not prepared or do not get all the information, we want to fix that. We want to make that clarified. So to answer your question, you will get information as we get it. We are planning on getting sh stoves, the tanks, and we might actually invest in the utensils. It's just a question if we'll get the accompanying dishwashers to accompany that because we handle 300, 280 campers a week at our maximum. And so that multiplied with the number of forks, knives, and spoons is something we've never done before. And so it is things that we're trying to plan and get associated with. Um, sorry to get the shield up, but I, like, uh, I just want to make sure you, you get everything you need. And yes, we will co communicate with you as best we can. Uh, at the end, we'll write up the email address that we will be sending information from. In all your program guides, there's an email address, baldwin at bsa.camp. That's a forwarding address that gets bounced to our Gmail account, so that way we can collect information and send it out. And some of you probably have already received an email from our Gmail account. If not, um, send an email to our BSA, baldwin at bsa.camp account, and it'll be um, responded to from the Gmail account. So. Yeah, to fix the clarity, we do plan on buying things. When we get them, we'll let you know. Um, but things are still in the process of moving forward. We do have that plan to get that stuff. Baldwin at what? Baldwin at, Baldwin at oh, when we have chalk. Oh, uh, yeah, Baldwin <laughs> at bsa.camp. And it's in your program guide, page three. It's all in the program. 25k donation. This is much chalk. <laughs> is there any other questions about food or allergies or anything like that? Special needs. Can you mail to this address? Um, yeah, and there's forms that you should be able to fill out, and then forward that you can scan it and email that to their to that email address, and it'll come to us. Um, there's, I think, the special needs form is in the packet. It's online. Huh? It's online, online yeah, it's, oh, I thought there was one in the package. And so you can fill that out, scan it, and email it if you want. Okay. We, our troop went last year. Mm -hmm. We were going to go to Pioneer, but it got canceled. So mm -hmm. the boys selected to go back to Baltimore. Nice. I thought you guys did an awesome job. Well, thank you. It, you know, it, everything was taken care of. You, what you did from the kitchen for us was great. So well, thank you so much. I Good. Think everybody's going to be well pleased. I'm glad. I'm glad. One, one thing is. It, there's plenty of food. I know sometimes people have experiences where they go to camp and they're a little hungry all week. That does not happen at Baldwin. Just as long as you tell me, we'll make sure you have enough food. So, and if there's stuff you want to bring, so sometimes there's people with lots of special needs. We can we have a dairy-free, a vegetarian, and a gluten-free. If you've got somebody that's vegetarian, gluten-free, and dairy-free, I probably can't accommodate that. If you're one of them, I can accommodate. I can't do everything. I can't do vegan. So if you have somebody with lots of allergies, you're more than welcome to bring your own food. We'll store it in our walk-in up at uh, the commissary because we don't want you keeping a bunch of food in your campsite and having to worry about it going bad, staying cold, squirrels getting into it. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to bring extra stuff. Like I said, to embellish your menu too. If you have stuff you plan all week, you want to add to it, let us know. Um, if you just bring it up and we'll label it and we'll keep it in there. And if you have somebody that does have lots of dietary needs, um, if they want to like, parents want to do um, Monday's breakfast and lunch, put that in the bag, label it. We'll deliver it with the regular, with the regular deliveries, you know, Monday's dinner you know, that troop number and we'll deliver it with your other food. So if that's an issue for anybody. Yes. And then, yeah, I remember some camps, they had like a, a little, little sandwich station. You could go in between hours and get a little snack. Well, at Baldwin, we don't have a dining hall. So what we do have, though, is we give you guys a staple box when you get there. And it has, like, it'll have your punch and a pitcher and garbage bags, you know, um, stuff. 
oatmeal is a staple, cold cereal is a staple, all that stuff will be there. And there is peanut butter and jelly and bread. If somebody has a peanut allergy, we have sunflower butter as a substitute that we can also give. And that is a staple item. So it's there for your guys to come back to their campsite and make a snack. And we have delivery truck that delivers um, food to most of the camp. And all those staple items are on there. So when they make a delivery, if you need more bread or you need more peanut butter or jelly or syrup or oil or whatever it is, they'll have it. You can grab it right then when they make it their deliveries twice a day. There's three campsites that um, the truck can't go to. There's a little truck that can go and I don't have room to carry all that stuff. Okay. So then you can just walk up to all the right. commissary and get it. And anytime okay. in between deliveries, you can get it. So anything else? Coffee made in camp or is coffee available for adults somewhere centrally? Um, at the program center, there's a uh, coffee running and there's usually, I think we have lemonade and kind of like that. Yeah. Awesome. If you want to make coffee or games, you can do that too. <laughs> or, you know, uh, should guy might bring it down once or twice a week. We'll find out. I don't know. We'll see. Awesome. Um, real quickly, I'm going to talk to you guys about program. I don't know if it got mentioned, but there is these new program guides. <clears throat> they just got updated May 10th. So just a couple weeks ago, there's some in the back there. So make sure you can grab one of those before you leave. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go through the basics real quick in this touch on some of our key elements and then touch on what's new that's happening this summer. Um, but highly recommend you grab one of those uh, so you can read through it. I'm not going to sit here and bore you to death reading through line by line everything you see here. I'm just going to hit on the big topics real quick. Um, so that can't hold on. Um, like I said earlier, the trip method is one of the big things we do. Another big thing that we're pushing at Camp Baldwin is for your older scouts. Those scouts that have been to camp before, They've knocked out those merit badges. Maybe they're really close to Eagle. They don't necessarily need merit badges. What do we do with those kids? Um, one of the big things that we have going on at Camp Baldwin we've been working on uh, is called our outbound programs. Um, typically in the past, we've had three outbounds. We've been adding them a little bit here and there. And then new, new, this year, we have a new outbound that I'm going to talk to you about here in a little bit. Those outbounds, we have a whitewater rafting trip. That one is on uh, Thursday. There we go. Uh, so on Thursday, go down to the Deschutes River. It's a lot of fun. You can hit like class three, class four rapids. Um, I'm going to say you get a little bit wet. You're going to get a lot wet. Um, it's a lot of fun. The kids have a lot of good signs with that. Um, on Fridays, um, they're going to go down to Hood River and do uh, windsurfing. There's a little hook. They call it the hook in Hood River. There's this little, um, what is it, piece of land. I'm blanking the word for it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it, the hook, it goes out into the Columbia River, so they're not technically in the Columbia River, but close enough. It's still the same water. Um, when they go out there, the instructor's really good about getting them up on a board, so they're having a lot of fun of that. And then we also have an outbound on Wednesday. That one is going up to, I'm blanking every words today. Um, thank you. Yeah. Exactly. Read along. Perfect. That was a test. Winston. They're going on Wednesdays up to Ski Bowl. That one's kind of more like a family amusement park. There's a lot of different um, activities and rides that they can do up there. They can't do everything because of the Boy Scouts, but most of it they can do. Um, also, with Wednesday one, they get a meal provided at the park. Um, so they can have like a nice juicy hamburger and greasy fries and all that fun stuff. Um, that one's a lot of fun they can do. And then, here's the, yes. Is. Uh, Cliffhangers available? It I don't see not. it on the website anymore. Yeah, it is not, unfortunately. That's one thing that we're still working on. We have a couple of bumps about setting that up. It's still something we're still working on, like I said, um, but not this summer, unfortunately. Um, the new outbound, um, uh, yep. Yeah. 14 and up for outbound? Yes. 13. Yep. 13. Hey, we got our own program, guys. No. It says 13. 13 for out pounds, 14 is for the shop program that I'll talk to you here in a little bit. That's where I got 14 from. Sorry about that. Um, shop is six. Yeah. All right. Uh, the new outbound that we're doing the, this year is going to be on Tuesdays, and they're going up to Timberline Lodge. That one got developed because we're changing up how we do Eagles Nest a little bit. Um, our Eagles Nest program in the past, we've been there before. It's kind of just drop in during free time at any time that the kids want to and do that. Now we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a block schedule in the morning. So it's two hours. They go through. It's a little bit more structured to working through the requirements. 
And one of the things they're going to get if they sign up for that block schedule in the morning is they're going to get the same uh, they're going to work on the citizenship and the nation merit badge. Um, and one of the big requirements for that merit badge is visiting a historical site. And that is where this app bound comes in on Tuesday is they're going to go up to um, Timberline. I said it earlier and I forgot it already. I don't know what's with me and name today. They're going to go up to Timberline Lodge, visit that. We've talked to them about getting up with a tour, um, learning about the historic um, nature of that lodge up there so they can get that requirement more done. Um, so yeah, back to Eagles Nest, that one's a little bit different. They sign up for the two hour block schedule in the morning and then they'll get a merit badge of citizenship in the nation along with working on getting them up to first class as much as they can do. All right, um, a couple of other big, for your older scouts we have at Camp Baldwin, one of the big things that we've done a few years ago that we have a new merit badge for and that's our shop program. A lot of, um, honestly, that's one of my favorite areas at camps, the shop area. And that's because it exposes those kids to a lot of those kind of like tray caps of welding, of automotive maintenance. And new this year that we're doing is plumbing. A lot of those, like let's face it, not every kid's going to want to go to college. Not every kid's designed to go to college. So this kind of experience is like, hey, not only am I actually really good at welding, I really liked it. Maybe I want to pursue this as a career. And then they can go to a two-year, get a two-year program, and jump right into a career with welding. Um, so that's why I'm really excited about that. With our new shop program, we're also offering plumbing merit badge. Um, that one does have a fee with that. You can look that more up in your packet. Welding merit badge, you need to be 16 years of age or older because, well, they're playing with fire and making things and building two pieces of metal together. All the other shop merit badges are 14 and up. Um, just because the shop, you're exposed to a lot of tools and that kind of stuff, and you just want to make sure that the maturity level is there for that. All right. The other big thing that we have at Camp Baldwin is our aquatics. Um, we do have, uh, a couple years ago, we started our sailboat program. They're also working on getting some new sailboats for this year, um, so we can explain, expand those offerings with that. Um, and, of course, we have kayaking, stand-up paddleboarding we just got uh, last year. That one's a lot of fun as well. Um, I don't really get it, but you just you have a board, you go out there, you have a big paddle, you stand up and you paddle around the lake. Kids really love it, adults really love it too. And it's not for me, I don't know. I, it's probably just me. I, it is me actually, I'm not gonna lie on that one. But uh, everybody else has fun, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> um, and then all the other standard aquatic merit badges with that, like life saving and everything. Um, and you find that full list in here in your packet as well. Um, also new this year, and it's kind of exciting, up at our shooting ranges, we have a new program called Chalk Ball. And what that is, think of paintball, except instead of pink balls, they're shooting out little balls of chalk at targets. So it's, good. it's a program that um, they tried it out a couple times here now. It's new. The Boy Scouts just started last year, I believe. Um, kids have been having a lot of fun with that, um, and we're excited to offer that this year at the Camp Ball with our, our, a new range for that and targets. Um, and yeah, so there should be a lot of fun with that. Um, I think that's a big new thing is climbing. Um, the big thing with Camp Baldwin and climbing, we don't have a climbing tower. We don't expose kids to, you're not going up on something that's crafted by human hands, pouring plastic, that kind of thing. You're going out to real rocks. They're 80, 90 feet tall. Um, so it's a little bit more um, in-depth, real-world experience. Like everything else at Camp Baldwin we've been talking about. It's a little bit more challenging, um, of course. That one, you need to be 13 in age and over. Um, it's a long hike to get off the rocks, but it's definitely well worth it. Um, kids get a really different experience. It's climbing on a real walk. Um, it's a really fun experience. I highly recommend. Even if somebody has taken climbing somewhere else, take it again. Sign up again. Do it out there so you can get that experience of climbing on real walk days. Um, and yeah, and of course we have a bikes program. We just got last summer we just got a big donation as well to get some new bikes. We have some new bikes available. Um, that we started last summer. That we have again this summer. Uh, so we have a couple of rides, afternoon drive for that. We have an overnight ride as well as a sunset ride later on in the week. Um, so the bike program is really exciting. That one is also two hours in the morning. That one's a little bit difficult to get done in a week at camp because there's just so much riding that's required with that of like. A, like $25, like two fives, two tens, two twenties, two seventies. There's a lot of writing that goes along with that. But they're going to get as much writing as they can with that merit badge time and the different afternoon 
rides that they have available with that. All right. Any other? I think that's about all the new things. Yeah. Oh, no. oh you're good. Yeah. New big things with that. Um, the last thing I'm going to say for Dan, I don't want to steal his thunder with horses, so I'll leave that for Dan. But if you have any other questions besides horses in terms of program right now, I can answer that. Yeah. How about for first class scouts that are under 13 years of age? Yeah, that's fine. What is there available for them? They can still sign up for that Eagles Nest program. Okay. Oh, in general, you mean? Yeah, they can't oh, yeah. use shots. Oh, they so. can't do. Perfect. Yeah, let's not forget them, right? Let's not forget. Let's not forget them too. Um, all these typical merit badges with that. So, you're like environmental science, um, most of these merit badges in here, they can still sign okay. up for. Um, the ones I just listed are kind of the main ones that they can't. Uh, but all, if you look at this, most of these they can still accept. I mean, it's highly recommended that they do these ones. So kind of ease them into scabbing. You don't want to just jump in right into welding. Because a lot of times that little 11 year old is going to fail at welding and he's going to have a bad time. He's not going to come back next year, right? Um, so most of that stuff. Also, you bring up a good point too that I've always seem to forget to mention is that, I forget the statistic now because I can't remember anything today, of course. Um, it's like, it's really high. It's like 72, something like percent of that of kids that drop out the first year in camp. If they don't have a good first year, not just at summer camp, but also in your troop, they're just gonna drop out. And that's a danger zone right there, is when they first cross over into Boy Scouts, making sure they have a quality time with them. And so we really pay a lot of attention. I know we talk a lot about the older scouts, but we do pay a lot of attention to those first year scouts. That's one of the main reasons that we're kind of changing up how we do our Eagles Nest program. And then also that we have um, our, we're, we're changing the name and I can't remember it, but it's like a. What did you? It's like a. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're just calling the first year program where they go around into different areas and they can work on uh, different tasks, and at the end of it, they'll get um, a little award they can make. Did you change the name of that? No, no we're still working on it. Uh, okay. Would that be appropriate for someone who already has first class? Yeah, it, well, if they wanted to, yeah. Because the point is kids who have first class mm -hmm. but are not yet at that 13. So there's the, you know, 12 years old who yeah. have achieved first class. Yeah, I would leave it up to you on kind of judging what their maturity level is. Anybody can take it. If you're 17, you can still, it used to be called like the Rainbow Trail. We're, we're changing the name, but you get the yeah. idea. But if they want to do it, that's fine. It kind of, um, I'll leave that up to you. It's open to what they feel like taking. Um, but yeah, they go around the different areas, get a feel what, they have different activities that are designated just for kind of them that they can do, and they can change it up a little bit depending on the age group. They can go as an individual or with a buddy or as a whole patrol. If you have a younger patrol, um, they can go around and do that as well um, to kind of ease them into the whole scouting movement and different activities they can do. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple different activities. With climbing, what I want to point out to you is that earlier on in the week, we have what's called an evening repel, and you'll see that in the schedule. On the packet there. That one, just because they're repelling down the rock face is open up to any age Boy Scout. They don't have to be 13 because they're just repelling down the rock face. They're not actually climbing up. Um, and that's a big difference Boy Scouts make to with that. Um, so yeah, that one's a good one if you want to kind of get them more experience with that kind of climbing and have a little bit more fun with that. All right, any other questions about program besides horses? Yeah. We have a question from Ray, who's yes. asking, how do you Ray. get your gear into camp? when you arrive. Uh, Courtney will be talking about kind of when you arrive at camp and all that kind of scheduling and all that here in a little bit. Um, so I'll let her talk about that here in a minute, actually. Perfect. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan here. and He's going to talk to us about horses. So up at Baldwin, uh, we do a lot of afternoon rides that anyone is allowed to go on. Um, the merit badge kids are required to do a ride but that is done during their class times. And then we do um, three overnight rides, which are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Monday we have a cowboy dinner ride, which we go to the overnight site, but we don't stay out that night. We come back so that they can do all the afternoon program stuff, evening program stuff. Um, we have a CL bar program, which it is required that you are over the age of 14. That's because we do more um, hands-on stuff with the horses and so we want 
to make sure that all the boys are at a upper level. Uh, we do three merit badges down there. We do horsemanship, animal science, and vet med. And then are we adding that? No, okay. Uh, It'll be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions on any of that? Is there anything that you have to bring slash? So all the kids that go on the rides, they need to have long pants and closed-toed shoes. Um, tennis shoes are fine. It's just we go through brush, um, and we don't want anyone getting cuts on their legs. And on the saddles, you can actually get what's called a saddle sore, and it's from rubbing on the, the leather of the saddle. And so we don't want anyone getting sores like that. And sweats are fine. My understanding is that you know, parents can come up for the evening if they have sons mm -hmm. that are going, they can go on those rides. Oh, yeah. So, so the only one is allowed to go on the The issue we've, we've had, I sent an email about that, is that um, because there's, for the our group size that we have, we only have two leaders that can sign up under under Pendaroo. And so those dads that I want to sign up for, there's no way for me to, to specifically register them um, on Tenaru because it will show that I need to pay an adult registration fee. So if what they, the email I received today was that basically I just need to send an email to Camp Baldwin with those, those parents' names and the dates that they, the day that they want to. Or you can just ask, now you Mark will tell you, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, was it, the email was for me? No, it was from Jeanette. I would have to go back and look. Okay. See. Because I did, I did get a copy of that email. And so the, the way the tenter is set up that only people who are registered and paid to go to camp can sign up for all the pre-registrations. Right. If you have adults that are planning on going and would like to pay for them, you need to call us or email us like you've done. And so what we will do is actually we will tinker with Tentru to make the correct allocations and then collect your fees over the phone separately. Um, just because Tentru doesn't have that set up or equipped. So we can have, we do have a way to have your extra adults be able to pre-register for those as long as your unit is um, paid up. Yeah, so the, the, we, we pay for all of our camping fees, mm -hmm. but these extra, my understanding I, from the meeting we had earlier today was that those $35 fees for those overnights can be paid at camp. Is that correct or not? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, but with the pre-registration online, it's everyone who's wanting to do those, for the rides at least, they have to pay up front. Okay. And so for those two adults, we'll call you or we'll wait for you to call us and then we'll settle up. Okay. On the individual level, and then create the allocations that we reserve those spots for you. Okay. Uh, our herd is 40 horses strong, which is one of the uh, few and biggest on the West Coast, um, aside from uh, what's the big one? Philma. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> We're second to Philma in terms of horses. <laughs> uh, I can remember that one. All right, fine. <laughs> you know. um, so, those who want to do it and those who have met the requirements can sign up, and yeah, we'll talk next week, either okay. over email or over phone, to get that settled. Uh, it's been a busy week, so we're getting email to email, doing one step at a time. Okay. All right, and um, you guys can pay at camp, and that'll be in the trading post. The kids all need to be signed up for the ride in the trading post before the ride leaves, because I have to go up and get all the paperwork, so I can say how many kids I'm taking on each ride. Um, you have to pay for that again at the uh, trading the post? The trading post, yeah. Um, and real or, quick, sorry, you yeah. can also sign like sign up for the horse rides and the outbounds and all that stuff at camp as well, too. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's not required that you pre-sign up, but the pre-sign ups, they get, um, if a ride fills up, they go first type deal. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Real quick to know about horses. And you brought up my big fact is that we're a second in, uh, in terms of horse size until Philmont, so that's exciting with horses. But also kind of going back to what you guys were talking about earlier with, in terms of young kids and older kids, the seal bar is more designated to give those older kids an experience and something they can do. And that's why I kind of require the 14 year, years and up, also because they do more advanced techniques. Also with that, we um, it's a requirement they've already had horse and shit their badge or taken it at the same time. Um, so that's another example. When you're 11 year old, highly recommend you go ahead and take that horsemanship merit badge. So 11, 12 year olds, whatever, take that horsemanship merit badge, have fun on horses, because not a lot of camps offer horses, um, and not a lot of camps actually really have horses a lot anymore. They're, they're expensive to, to operate, and they're dying down really quick. Um, so really take advantage of that. 
And then next year or a couple years down the road when they come back to Baldwin, they already have the horsemanship merit badge, and they can, now they can do the CL Bard program. And I think that's everything I have. Awesome. <laughs> I'll let you talk. Yeah. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about arrivals at Kenya. Um, there's three different arrival times we're going to talk about. The first one is on Sundays during a Sunday start week. So we're going to um, have you guys arrive to camp by 11.30. And you are going to eat your sack lunches. And then at noon, our staff will greet you. And then we'll start our camp tour for the week. Is there any questions on that? That was pretty simple. Yeah. So I think we're the first week of July. I think that's a Monday start. Okay. That's right. Um, so last year we came in on Sunday and we were able to set up. Okay. Yeah. Can you still do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, do you provide the sack lunches for that Sunday arrival or do we bring them? No, that is on you guys to bring those. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is sun Monday starts. So on our Monday start weeks, if you guys will arrive on at 7.30, um, eat your sack breakfasts and then our staff will greet you at 8 and start the camp tour and the schedule for that week. Um, and then if you are coming in on a Monday during a Sunday start week, we'll have you guys arrive at 7 and go down to your campsites and our staff will greet you at your campsites where we will start with a breakfast at the commissary and getting all your commissary gear and a quick um, stop by the waterfront to get your health checks and your swim checks through before you can go to your merit badges. And for that, um, those scouts, those you can go to your merit badges just right away without having signed up because other Troops will have signed up on Sunday, so you guys can just go to those ones. Um, for the lottery merit badges that are climbing, the mountain biking, mountain boarding, the small boat sailing, and the welding, we do ask that you guys sign up for the lottery on those a week in advance. Anybody have any questions? Only for Monday on the Sunday. On, only for Monday on the Sunday start week. Repeat that again, just out loud one more time. Yes. So <laughs> if you are arriving to camp on a Monday during a Sunday start week, for your lottery merit badges, we ask that you do sign up for those a week in advance so we can get your scouts' names in for the lottery to make sure they get into that merit badge if they would like to. Sign up on the website. Yes. Yeah. Or here. You can also submit through here. Yeah. You can just email the names in. And real quick, because what happens on Sundays, I'll explain real quick, what happens on Sunday is what we call merit badge midway. Um, right, the camera. Hi, world. That's the microphone. Oh, it's okay. hi, camera. We're good. <laughs> so what happens on Sunday is what we call the merit badge midway. Um, right after the camp light dinner, and we'll give the kids an opportunity to go around to different areas and sign up for all the merit badges and activities and that bounds and rides and horse rides and bike rides and all that fun stuff they want to do throughout the week. We give them a chance to do that on a Sunday. Um, if it's a Monday start, we, we give them to them on Monday afternoon. You get the idea. So what happens, and the main reason we still kind of do the merit badge midway is one, it gives the kids an opportunity to think about, okay, what do I really want to take? I want to take all these things and gives them the skills to really start figuring out schedules. So it's going to come down the long, along the lines uh, when they get further down in life. life. I'm having a hard time today uh, with scheduling. And the second thing is it gives them the opportunity to talk with their instructors that they are taking the merit badges with during the summer, kind of learn more about them. Like, I'm on the fence about these two. It gives them a chance to talk to both those instructors, like, well, I'll go with this one because that one sounds more fun. Um, and so that's kind of what we're talking about with that. And so we'll take those names. The, kid, the instructors will have an idea um, in terms of the class sizes and, that, and whatnot with that. And so if, like Courtney was saying, if you have anybody, if you're on a Monday, if it's Sunday start week, wants to take any of those classes and do have a class size limit, make sure you get those names in. Either just email them here or just on um, tent room with that. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm, I think I, I missed something. To That's okay. Sure. I thought we were signing up for the merit badges before the kids got to camp. So do we do that or no? So we don't do anything with merit badges and classes beforehand? Okay, so the ones that have lotteries. What? Tell me. I'll answer that. I have I'll a lottery list. Climbing, sailing, yeah. rolling, bedding, biking, and boarding. Yes. So those are lotteries because there's a reduced number of spots that the youth can participate in. All the other merit badges that we're doing through Tentru to, to um, pre-sign up, uh -huh. we're using those to gauge class sizes ahead of time. Uh, summer camp is a unique beast to operate because we're asking for a lot of staff who are under the age 18, over the age 16 for the most part, who are working for very little pay to sure. work with on our schedules. And because of that, some of our programs will ebb and flow based off of the youth that participating. So one week we'll have 100 kids wanting to take horsemanship, and the next week we may only have 10. 
while they all want to jump into citizenship of the nation or environmental science. And so we're just using those merit badge signups on Tentaru just to gauge sizes and allocate resources and people when we, where we need them. So what I hear you saying is that there's some flexibility about making changes once yes. they get there. Absolutely. Yes. So kids should basically create a fairly full schedule ahead of time, even if they want to take climbing, sailing, welding, biking, or boarding, mm -hmm. because they should have a class in place that they can always drop if they get into one of those classes. Right. And that yes. happens on Sunday evening at camp. Yep. So, so I should talk to my kids about all the things that are available, have them select, and if they select these five, they still select something else, don't count on that, and you'll enter a lottery for that, yes? Excellent. That's a great way to run a meeting. <laughs> so in follow-up to that and tying the last of the loops together, if you pre-reg for a merit badge, does that mean you're in the class or you still need to go to Midway and register for the class even though you pre-reg? You are still in the class. Thank you. You are still in the class. If even you pre register, you, you're yeah. in. You're pre register, you're Thank in. Thank you. We're not, as long as it's not a lottery class, we're not <clears> going to say no to you to attending any of our merit badges outside the lottery group. We just have all multiples of these opportunities for the kids to sign up or to get an idea of where they want to go because we're trying to give you, the adult leaders, tools for the kids to kind of plan ahead, which is, I know, it's a little crazy of an idea for them to like start managing, especially if they're brand new and crossing over. No, or, <laughs> um, well, I'll have spreadsheets and checks. Well, I've got room in my group to talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want a job this summer? Yeah. But, my, but my point is that I can tell the kids, you know, it's okay. You're not etching this in stone right now. Yes. You're just giving us an idea of what you probably want to do. But they'll be flexible and nice when we get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will be but, flexible. We are nice. We are like Gumby. We're like noodles. That's the program. We're flexible. You're kids. You're dealing with kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the lottery ones, are they offset in here somehow? Climbing, yes. sailing, welling, biking, and boarding. Yeah, I know. You say that so fast that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. It's getting really fast. On this page right here, down into the bottom paragraph. That's on the. Okay. If you put the yeah, one that's, from the top. That's what I want. Yeah. 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 And if your kids do not get into those um, yeah. lotteries, they can just go to another merit badge class and learn that time program on Monday. I'm sorry to say that again. If your if your scouts do not get into that that lottery, then they can just go to a, their second choice or whatever. Right. Okay. They can just go. Yeah. All right. We cover it. Okay. Uh, my next thing. If you guys pre-ordered shirts, we do have those here, so we'll distribute that at the end. Thank you. Carrying crap to camp. I'm sorry. How do we carry crap to camp? Do you have oh, yeah, sorry, that was a question. I totally yep. forgot. Um, so when you arrive, we will allow one vehicle into your campsite at a time um, for you guys to offload and get that set up. If you have multiple, that's fine. Just take one at a time and then go back up to the parking lot, switch it out, and get another one. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Any issue with, uh, we've got a Boy Scout coming down from Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, I think Baldwin. He's not, you know, in, in council here. Okay. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 As long as he's registered somewhere, yeah. 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 Okay. I was just noticing there's a, there's, um, what's here, receipts, registration, blah, blah, blah. Okay. the insurance. What are you looking for there? For your insurance. Okay. No, just oh, trip insurance. Oh, it's trip insurance. The trip insurance. If you're That's a fine. trip with uh, the TPC, everybody's got it. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just the form saying that you have it. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you arrive to camp, someone said medical forms, that reminded me. If you can have your senior patrol leader holding all those medical forms, that's part of their camp tour is to turn those in. So, I think that's Oh, wait, there was a question online, too, about... I did the trailer one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there any more? No, just to add on to on that. Online. Oh, yeah, what was the trailer one? <laughs> <laughs> we this answered this right. for you. Right. <laughs> so, one vehicle We were talking yeah. about you can take one vehicle into camp, into oh, your right. campsite at a time to offload. Yeah. Okay. And, and get set up. And we'll, we, will be, we will be including that in the communications we go from now until when you arrive to remind you to do that, to pick one vehicle, to have all that stuff ready to have packed. If you forget to do that or you didn't get that message or someone didn't pass that along, um, there is space in our parking lot for you to do a quick shuffle of gear into one vehicle that can make it down the road and back. Or they can just, or you take, can just take multiple yeah. trips. It's, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. The trailers, though, will stay off the campsite. Right. Yeah, so all you'll move them in, and then by the end of Sunday evening, then every all the vehicles will go back up to the parking lot. Right. Yeah. All right, we cover everything. I think yes. so. The, and just confirming 
we can come in on a Sunday for a Monday start. Yes. Tiny in for that one. <laughs> if you would like to arrive earlier than a normal start, so that includes a Sunday start week or a Monday start week, uh, yes, you can. You just need to communicate to us ahead of time. There's a $25 fee that we need to collect because you'll be using the facilities a little extra uh, ahead of time. But outside of that, you would be allowed to come park in our parking lot, unload your gear, park, and be able to camp in your campsite. Uh, program areas will be closed off to you. We wouldn't have a meal service available to you. The shower house will be open for you to use, but uh, for the most part, we'll leave you kind of notices telling you that you should be staying in your campsite, or if you want to leave camp to go on a hike or go elsewhere, you're welcome to do that, but all programs will be closed because the staff that we have that run those program areas are, are taking a break <laughs> or uh, unavailable, so we can't run those areas safely without the proper management for them. If you do want to do those early arrivals, you just need to call us ahead of time so we can make sure we schedule that in. Um, and it's really uh, ideal for units that are traveling from very far, so that way they have enough space and time to not crash <laughs> because they're leaving at two o'clock in the morning. Um, but if it works for you and it adds to your program, uh, we can work that out just to communicate with us ahead of time. Just to make sure you are responsible for your own food, we don't provide meals if you come early. Yes. So. And the check-in time it says between five and like eight-ish. In the it's in the evening. Just to, just to confirm, if you are arriving on Monday on a Sunday start week, yes. you need to be to camp by 7.30? Yep, and that will give you time to go back, I'm sorry, seven at or 7. 7. At 7. So if you're, if you're arriving Monday on a Sunday start week, you need to be there at 7. So it's Sunday start week, you're arriving on Monday. If you, start, if you arrive at 7, our staff will meet you in your campsite at 7.30 to begin your tour. Okay. Does that cover that? Yes. Am I talking too fast? Oh. You can say so. Any more? All right. All right. Uh, we'll open up the Q and A. Yeah. Um, would you mind being up front? I have a couple questions first uh, for people who've been waiting. Uh, one person asks, "Do we need to arrange transportation for outbound activities?" Yes. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, for all our outbounds, those are. Um, Dependent on adult leaders taking those kids out. Um, our outbounds rec is going to work during the week about getting those carpooling um, so we can save space that way. But the adult leaders are the ones going on taking those kids down to those trips. Um, it's just kind of an insurance thing that way. And because those adult leaders are going down there, if you want to sign up and go down whitewater rafting, go ahead. It's a lot of fun, like I said. Um, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, so, like for with water, white water rafting, if you're driving the car down with all the kids, if you don't want to go rafting, you don't have to pay the fee. That's fine. Uh, but if you want to go rafting, just pay the fee, and you can go have fun with that. Uh, just and add to add on to that, uh, any vehicle that we use and that are used to take scouts out of camp for activities, they are visually inspected. Every youth that goes in a vehicle has to have a working seat belt, and whoever is driving the vehicle, the owner must have. Update insurance, registration, have a valid license, and be over the 21 with the accompanying uh, 2D leadership in the vehicle. Our staff would be driving themselves to uh, guide the activity, but when rides do go out, we have some requirements that are met so that way a uh, safety can be observed. Just all the fun legal mumbo jumbo thing. Anybody a lawyer in here? Oh, no. You're a lawyer? <laughs> Perfect. Then you understand it better than I do. <laughs> yes. I have a young man who would like to bring his compound bow. If I check that into the archery area and check it out, um, leave, is that possible? No. Mark no. says no. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Uh, Mark said no. Mark said no. Mark said no. That's fine. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, so, oh, so with the firearms that we do have, we register each one and we keep track of each one. We have documentation to keep track of the, the pull waves, its operation, its cleaning. Uh, for things that we have no uh, history or record of, that includes climbing gear, uh, we try to keep that out of camp. Um, we do offer different activities in the off season or opportunities for youth to come use facilities or even uh, Camp Merriweather. Shh, we won't say that name again. Uh, there are super weekends that you can use, uh, you can speak with their camp director to kind of organize things like that. But uh, for our summer camp program, uh, outside firearms are off limits. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. The one, I was just going to say that. Yes. Although, if you do accidentally bring one, we find out and you're very clear on us the first day, you can leave your car locked. Because if you plan on doing some other activity, like you're going to go hunting afterwards or something like that. So, just so you know. Yeah. No, one attempt with that, you can bring your own mountain bikes. Um, so, if anybody that wants to use their own mountain bikes for if they're taking a cycling merit badge, 
or they're playing, doing a lot of bike riding. Um, you can bring up your own bikes with that. Um, our bikes guys will just go ahead and do that inspection, make sure it's working in order and all that. And yeah, so you can bring up your own mountain bikes. How about mountain board? If you have one, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, I totally forgot about mountain boards. We have mountain boards too. Uh, think about snowboarding, but with wheels down the hill. It just seems like a, yeah, it's a recipe for <laughs> right, yes. yes, question online. Uh, Luke McCartney. Uh, Luke McCartney is asking for a Monday start. Was breakfast provided or no? For a Monday start week? Yeah. Uh, no. Your first meal will be uh, camp wide lunch. We'll have like, so we'll have a kind of like a, a brunch ish type breakfast in the morning. Um, with that. Oh, it's a Monday with a Monday? It was just a no, normal Monday start. Oh, sorry. So just a normal Monday, no. Um, your first meal that we'll be providing is a camp-wide lunch with that. Uh, yeah. But if you're arriving Monday on a Sunday start week. Then, then yes, we'll, we'll have a quick little brunch for you. Yeah. That's on, what I was on like. your tour, there'll be some food. So okay. if you get your tour, you can get something to eat. Okay. Uh, any more questions on one? Uh, any more questions in the group? Yes. The citizenship in the nation yes. is run during trail the first class? Yes. So a first class scout is part of that be. program, yeah. But if they're already first class, then oh. they wouldn't want to. Tag it, tag it. Okay. Just just tag my hand. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> the citizenship of the nations offer twice okay. during the week. So okay. once will be part of that two hour block for trail first class. Another is at two o'clock in the afternoon okay. in the same area. Uh, that one's kind of more reserved for non new scouts. Okay. We want the newer scouts, the brand new scouts to be in the trail first course for a trail first class program. They want to get that merit badge and get that full experience. So yes, there's one at two o'clock. Okay. Thank and you. will the people who go to the two o'clock one just go to Timberline? Yes. Yeah. So there are two trips. One will leave with the normal class time for trail first class. A second one will leave around noon. And so that way they're back by three o'clock. It takes about an hour to get to the site, an hour to do some of the interpretation our staff will do going over the CCC and how the camp well, not camp. The lodge is tied into the sense of citizenship, and uh, the camp's kind of history with patriotism, and then an hour to get back to camp. And lunch, sack lunches are provided for both events. All right. Any more before we go? Yeah. The chicken dinner on Friday, what time should the parents get there? Um, kind of any time in the afternoon. We'll start flag at 6 o'clock, and then right after that, we're jumping right into dinner. Um, so kind of any time in the afternoon is a good time to stop by. Um, I recommend earlier in the afternoon, give them a chance to walk around camp, see what the kids have been up to, see the lake, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, even more questions will be here. If you want to grab your shirts, just make sure they're all over here with troop numbers. Um, just make sure you check out with Corny so we can mark you off on the list. If you grab that, and that's it from us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the list? Do you have the list, Courtney? Is this That's the list. So cross out um, each shirt size that they got in the bag. It should be listed on the bag. These guys will see you in a few weeks. Yeah, see you soon. Yeah. What week are you coming up? Uh, July 8th, 14th. Okay, cool. Get the shields ready. <laughs> the shields ready. Me too. Awesome. Well, we'll see you then. We're still live. <laughs> Stop the live so we can talk. No, I, I got to answer one more question. So, all right. Ray, are you there? Ray? So if you made a pre-order and you made your payment in time for the get the pre-order coupon, your pre-order shirts are over there in the corner in a box that's off screen, and they'll be waiting for you for you when you arrive. If you did not get the coupon, you did not get the pre-order shirts, uh, but they're still available for purchase in the trading post when you arrive. Just I bring my laptop. I mean, if it's something really off, we can okay. take it to the tree. Okay, then I will mark what you can get there. Yeah, we will. Okay, and who are you looking for? I don't know that I'm looking for anything.
Yes. Hi, my name is Randy Wilson. I'm yeah. 390 Scoutmaster, yeah. and we've made a note in the, reg in the register that as we registered, we are three LDS troops who are just oh, reorganized. Let me, let me uh, silence the microphone so that way we're not broadcasting live to everybody. But there are some more questions I need to answer uh, oh, there for you, okay. Ray, and I'll okay. get back to you. Okay. so where is um, the first yeah. the yeah. or you may have designated you're going to there's a sheet Maria has a cross on it it's confirmed that Maria has a spread sheet I got you. I got you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And to answer your question, Ray, uh, the deadline for the pre-order shirts is June 10th, from what I last understood. So you should still have the ability to log in and get your pre-orders by June 10th if you haven't already done so. You're good. Yeah. So I got a question from Brian. Yeah. Are you able to check online? So we're on Troop 499. Yeah. Um, are you able to confirm if there's any other troops that are going to be sharing our campsite? Uh, you'll find out when uh, a week, about like five days in advance of your arrival. Because we've, what I've, I've heard that there's, there's a couple of other wards in our state and with LDS troop that were going to be joining us, but I have no way of con confirming that. So if, if you can communicate with them ahead of time to make sure that you all decide to want to be part of the group, yeah. you just need to communicate that's me through the email, okay. and then I can make that arrangement. Okay. So all right. I just need to follow up on that. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Usually we don't get that information because not not everyone enters it on Tentaru for the sure. registration notes. But if you communicate that to us personally, we can, confirm we can then create that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's not an issue. Okay. How does the second week of July look as far as registration? Uh, it's over 100 now, <laughs> so it's 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 not getting canceled. It's yeah. it'll still be open because you have to have a certain number, right? Ideally, if we want to be fiscally responsible and not sure, you know, but if you have enough now, now you're not going to be canceled. No, we're not going to be. Okay, great. That's what I wanted to find out. So, because was that what happened at Pioneer with that? Yeah, they didn't have enough. No, it didn't have enough. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah, tell your friends, Special. internet. Tell your friends to sign them up for camp. Go to camp. Okay, okay. just turn it off the light <laughs> and you're done. You're liking this way too much. And and drug it. <laughs> right. So yeah, maybe they haven't um, ordered them yet. Okay. You can still answer questions. There you go. Oh, I did find our.